While more than half of Louisiana's school districts are still under federal court supervision, embroiled in desegregation lawsuits dating back to the mid-1960s. What effect will the new school choice laws have on them? Southern Education Desk reporter Sue Lincoln finds out. We always remember our parents tell us, look, Governor kids, Bobby Jindal is expected to sign the School Choice Act into law within the next week. But will the measure, which gives students options other than just attending their neighborhood public school, help or hinder resolution of the longstanding desegregation cases in Louisiana? Bossier City Representative Jeff Thompson wants to know. The current consent decrees and the desegregation orders that are in place that limit so many of our school children's choices need to be addressed because it's an overwhelming financial burden for the various school districts. More than three dozen school districts in Louisiana are still being overseen by the federal courts. The Bossier Parish case is the oldest desegregation lawsuit still active, originally filed in 1964. Thompson, a Republican, took his concerns directly to Governor Jindal. We need to save money for our school systems. We need to be paying teachers, not attorneys, to have to fight that. So why we ask uh, Governor Jindal to use all the resources available to the state, through the government, through the Attorney General's office, to help defer those costs. Litigation is never cheap, but the DSEG cases in the courts for 40 years or more have a particularly heavy price tag. For example, an attorney in the Evangeline Parish case, which is now wrapping up, just submitted his bill for fees, $1.6 million. Why so much? Consent decrees and desegregation orders require that school districts get okays from judges, usually, for pretty much everything that they do. Dr. Carl Bankston is the chairman of the sociology department at Tulane University. He's also the author of two books on school desegregation in Louisiana. Bankston says federal court oversight of school districts conflicts with the purpose of the school choice law, as put forth by the policymakers. The whole point of this uh, education reform plan is to give school districts greater flexibility uh, in making their own plans. For example, the recent growth of charter schools, which are fast-tracked in the new school choice law, have already become an issue in some of the desegregation cases. Every time a district opens a charter school, if that district uh, is under federal supervision, that district is going to have to go to the judge and get the judge to okay uh, the decision to say that that doesn't run in any way counter to the goals of desegregating the school district. Governor Jindal has said he believes the school choice plan is aligned with the purpose behind desegregation, giving equal educational opportunity to those who have fewer socioeconomic resources. Representative Thompson says statewide scholarships target those students from families without the financial resources to move to districts that have better schools. But the desegregation order and the consent decree deals with every child, regardless of income, regardless of socioeconomic status. Dr. Bankston foresees problems with at least one part of the school choice plan, the part that allows students to attend school in another district when schools in their local district aren't making the grade. Bankston says the U.S. Supreme Court already ruled on that issue in 1974. In Milliken v. Bradley, uh, the Supreme Court has ruled that you cannot move students you, across uh, school district boundaries for purposes of desegregation. Whether you can do it in order to give individual students a better educational opportunity remains to be seen. Dr. Bankston also expects school choice to conflict with desegregation orders in the rural parishes since some federal courts have established daily time limitations on busing students. If you're going to take students out of failing schools, out of schools that are said to be fail, out of schools in which the majority of students are failing, and try to move them somewhere else, you're going to have to take them a pretty long way in some of these rural parishes in order to get them into a school that you think is better.
Governor Jindal has promised state legal assistance on school choice implementation for those districts still under desegregation orders or consent decrees. And Representative Thompson says he expects the new school choice law will actually help to finally resolve these federal lawsuits. When a lot of the desegregation orders were put in place in consent decrees, it, it was a different situation. We contacted three different attorneys involved in some of the desegregation cases that are still open. All refused comment on the potential impact of the school choice law. One lawyer did say the reason he couldn't comment was because new motions in his case were being prepared, a direct result of the school choice law. For the Southern Education Desk, I'm Sue Lincoln. Now, desegregation lawsuit complications are not the only potential legal battlegrounds for the new school choice law. Parents of special needs students are also looking to challenge the rules in court. We'll look closer at that one next week. The Southern Education Desk is a partnership among public radio and television stations across the Gulf South. We delve into a wide range of educational issues from kindergarten through 12th grade and higher education. For more information, log on to southerneddesk.org.